Thanks for being here. Good evening. I'm Rafi Levy and I'm the CEO of DOTS. DOTS is the company offering real-time, continuous and affordable soil nitrate data. Before we get into that, let's look at the problem itself. There is no real-time nitrate data at the soil level, at the root level today. So the common practice to ensure yields is overdose. In fact, if we look at the market values, we're talking of a $200 billion fertilizer market with a 40% waste factor, making it an $80 billion a year problem. Now this problem has three directions, three verticals. The farmers lose $80 billion a year. The environment absorbs the damage and the suffering of $80 billion worth of contamination. And eventually to drink the water we drink, the municipalities rehabilitate the water, investing just about the same amount of money on cleaning the water from the damage we caused. Now, why is that? Because the, ve the three vectors of technology available today have shortcomings. I'll start at the bottom. The manual sampling is the best method. It's precise, it's accurate, it's scientific, but it means a man in the loop. You have to go to the field, take a sample, do the test, get a result. So you cannot do it on large scale farming and you cannot have a continuous data stream on this vertical. The visual analysis is the second best uh, uh, method, but it's too late. It's a bit of an autopsy because when you see a damage, you know what, that you had a deficit a few days back, you have no idea what's happening now. And the most common method is an estimation method. Uh, people measure a whole bunch of soil parameters, salinity, uh, electric conductivity, temperature, et cetera, and they try to deduct or assume uh, what the fertilizer level caused this equation that they see, but it's an estimation at best. DOTS developed an end-to-end -end solution, starting with a so DOTS developed and patented soil sensor, which, monitor, which collects nitrate data, where in the cloud, we fuse our data with third-party data and third-party sensors uh, to give a full dashboard to the user, and the farmer or the agronomist in that case. Our next step will be not only to give the dashboard, but also to give, I would call, call it a cruise control, where, you, where the farmer will tell us what he wants and our system will ensure he gets it. How do we do it? Well, I'll start with the IP. We have four registered patents on three components of the system. A unique siphoning mechanism, which we patented and developed. A unique electro-optical flow cell, where we measure the solution we extract from the soil and we measure absorbency of the solution. And the most important component of our system is the algorithm which we have, which is painted in two separate patents to give us the differentiation between all contaminants in the soil, in the soil pour water to the nitrate itself. In fact, what we say is that we've developed the ECG of the ground soil. And we shifted from a finger on the pulse technology to an ECG technology. Now, this is the real deal. This is the graph of nitrate dynamics in the soil at the root level. Now, as you see, it's highly dynamic. The problem is not only that it's dynamic and you cannot predict what you'll have today by based on a measurement yesterday. The problem is that when you ask an agronomist or a farmer, how, where would you want to be? He'd say, please put me here. And as you can see here, this is a clear picture of the overdose. Now, this is common practice and this is worldwide. Now we took it one step further and we control the fertilization and we managed to contain the fertilizers exactly where they should be. Most importantly, our sensor is a three depth sensor. And most importantly, what we proved is that beneath the root zone in the orange bar here, you can see zero nitrate, meaning everything we put in the ground was uptaken by the roots, zero leaching to groundwater. Now there are lots of competition out there. I'm not gonna go through this whole table, but there are people doing this. I'll tell you one thing. If we look at the clusters of solutions today, on the top left, you have the cluster which gives you exact, precise nitrate measurements, but they need a man to do them. It's not automated, it's not continuous. On the bottom right, you have good agricultural ag tech companies giving you continuous ag tech data, but mostly irrigation data. None of them deal with the fertilizer levels. How did we do it? Well, to be honest, we didn't. It was done by our founders before we, even, we, before we were even born. We are, we're, we're founded based on seven years of research with half a million dollars of academic and funding and government investments. The three founders you see here did this for seven years and I managed to join them uh, about, about a year back when we, the four of us formed the company. In the six months we've been running, in the six months we've been running, we raised the funds, we raised our first team or recruited our first team, which is non-founders and started going on the first producible gener uh, generation product and already are into field trials with it. 
The company is not a pure R&D company, even though it started with R&D. We see markets, we see sales, and we know where we're going in this sense. So as you can see here, the company started off in R&D, but it's going to shift the focus towards marketing and sales as time goes by. Our roadmap is to complete the product development by the end of this year, including multiple field trials. We presently have two. We plan to reach 10. And towards the end of the year, reach the first contracts in the US and expand to US and Europe over 23 and 24. How are we going to do it? Well, I'll just recap on the market for a minute. It's a $200 billion market. 80 billions are wasted yearly. We believe we can re easily reduce 50% of the waste, making it a $40 billion market. Our business is a SaaS or a DAS business and not a, a, a sensor selling business. And our structure is such that we are going to take anywhere from 10 to 20% of the potential savings. Even if we take only a 10% savings, we're talking of a $4 billion per year market share. How are we going to do it? Well, although I, I got to stop you, Rafi, five minutes. Really? Either way, yeah. it was an awesome pitch. No, don't worry. How much are you guys, how much are you guys raising just for people listening? The last couple of details. We're raising 5 million which will mostly go to complete the product, launch sales. Some of it will go for initial production because we know we're going to have to give it away for the first season or two to prove the, to prove the concept to reluctant farmers. But once they see it, we see it in Israel in the first trials we did. Once they see it, it's a sticky product. They don't want to stop. They don't want to leave. When we finished the, the trial in Israel and, and we said, thank you, we're going away with the system. The answer was, what are you crazy? I need the data. So... The, the attitude is once they see the value, it, it's an addictive product. It's a sticky product. They, they don't want to cut it off because they, they must use the data. It's also stuck in the ground at that point. So it's a, it's a little bit of an effort to take out. So my, my question for you, I'm, I've been involved with Dots for a while now, learning more about the company um, and transparency. It's a company that we're looking for at, or looking with, looking into with Forward VC. So, um, one of my questions for you is, what initially pulled you into the team? What initially got you here? Because you have an operator background. Well, I have four, I have four years of, of engineering and mostly engineering management background. I. I started my engineering career in 1982 after graduation, and I've been an engineer and mostly an engineering manager all my life. Uh, what got me here is the fact that this is the first product I saw, which is literally a game changer in the contamination game that we're playing to, to make to manufacture food. Uh, because no one is thinking of the environment when it comes to food. We're thinking of the environment when it comes to everything around us, gasoline and this and that. But when it comes to food, we think of people first. This product is a game changer. In, tw in 15, 20 years, as, as Frankie also said, there will not be enough food in the world because there's not enough land to grow it on and because there's not enough resources of fertilizers in the world to give enough food to the number of people that will be here in 20 or 30 years. If you use half the fertilizer, you can definitely use more and more lands and generate more and more food with the resources we have today. And in terms of go to market, you mentioned agronomist and uh, channel partnerships there. How yes. do you how do you see that rolling out? It's not something where you've seen a lot of large ag tech IoT companies scale quickly. I agree with that because I think most of them were trying to look at your fingernails and not at your heart. Most of them went and looked under the flashlight where it's easy. Measuring moisture in the, in the soil is easy. Assuming how much you have to irrigate is easy. These guys that I joined, and again, I can brag because it's not me, it's them. The guy, these guys broke their heads against the wall for seven years and they cracked the enigma, which was which is a challenge that running for the last 40 years of how the hell does one measure nitrate in the soil? There's no answer today except this one yet. I'm sure there'll be competition, but presently they are the icebreakers. And that's one of the reasons we feel that we're going to grow much faster than any ag tech. And we're not going to go it alone. I, again, I, I can go back to my slides, but we're not going to go it alone. We're going to go with channel partners. We're going to go with other ag tech companies, which have hundreds and thousands of clients and give them the overlay of nitrate to their irrigation decisions they make today. Now, the, the overlay of the nitrate is the game changer, because if they cut 15 percent of the water cost, it's nice. But if they cut 40 percent of the fertilizer cost, it's critical. There are farmers in the States today which stopped growing because of fertilizer costs. We can bring them back into the, into the game if we cut the costs in half. 
are your pricing models based off of current fertilizer prices or, or 2019, 2020 prices? All the numbers you saw in my presentation are 2019 prices when fertilizers were $660 per ton. Today, they almost reached $1,800 per ton. Thanks to Putin. Uh, any questions from the rest of the investor panel for Rafi? Yeah, I do. It seems like there's a lot that um, you definitely have your opinions on the market. And it's I'm a new I'm a new person to this market. I've been looked super, super closely into the fertilizer space. And you've already highlighted a little bit of, of, you know, people taking the easy way out or sort of, you know, looking for quick, quick solutions rather than putting in the hard way. And I'm, I'm, I'm curious, what do you believe is the most misunderstood thing about the market that you're in? It's, it's not, I, I wouldn't say misunderstood, but I would say that most ag tech companies uh, uh, are, are, think of this as any other consumer product where they can get a, you get a good iPhone, you pitch good, you have a good commercial on TV and you sell. Farmers are a, are a combination of extremely sophisticated people and extremely conservative people. They're not going to buy. They're going to buy from people they trust and they don't trust ag companies because they weren't around 15 years back. They trust their dealers, they trust their channels, they trust their advisors because the farmer today is the great grandson of the original farmer and the advisor today is the great grandson of, of his great grandfather's ad advisor. These guys run in the family for ages and these families are intermarried and interconnected because they're in the sector. I have to go through the channels. I cannot go directly to farmers because there's no chance of bypassing tradition and bypassing relations which have run for 60 years. So I must reach them through their channels, through their trusted partners. And I think that many uh, ag tech companies took a few years to realize that. I, I'm not saying something new. Most ag tech companies today are trying this channel, but some of them have been running for six or seven years until they figure this one out. And I'm just riding on, on this wave of, of their understanding. Thank you, Rafi. If I may chime in with uh, with a question from my end here. Um, so first yes, of all, I, I really like how you connect the, the problem to your solution. So that, that was a very clear link there. Um, one quick question on the product and then one on commercialization. Um, on the product, are there any other uh, data layers that you use that, that sort of flow into the, into the software uh, solution that the pharmacy is apart from nitrates, apart from the data that you gather with the sensor? Yes. Uh, uh, because of the time shortage, I wasn't elaborate enough, but yes, our system, our dashboard is a full dashboard. Everything you get from other companies plus nitrate, not mm -hmm. only nitrate. Nitrate is meaningless standalone. That's one thing. And the other thing is farmers, as I said before, they want a simple life. They don't want confusion. You give them five systems they have to go through and you give them 20 data points, they'll get confused. They want a simple yes, no decision. Should I fertilize or not? Should I irrigate or not? Yes, no, black, white, simple. Not Again, not because they're stupid people. They're smart people, but they're loaded people. They got a lot of work. They got a lot of things to do and manage. They need a simple yes, no, and not an equation to solve. We give them a yes, no. Got it. Is there any risk then from your end of, of be becoming too dependent on the availability of other data, non-nitrate data? No, because uh, we have non-nitrate sensors as part of our system, off-the-shelf sensors. We didn't develop them. We integrated them. And the other data we need is weather. I don't think weather.com or any or weather underground or any of these will go away in the next uh, decade. Got so it. whether you can buy off the, off the shelf again as data. No. You alluded to a grant funding briefly. I'm wondering how dependent were you in the last couple of years on grant funding and and do you see your, how do you see yourself sort of weaning yourself off of grant funding and becoming a pure commercial company in the coming years we started off as a commercial company the grant funding was done for the academic research within the university the minute we set up the company we we are detached from grants and we can approach the european horizon uh, 2021 or whatever we we have endless uh, requests to join other parties, European parties in this, but it's extremely time consuming. And I honestly believe that grants is a bit of a lottery at this point in time, because we're, we don't have traction and, and we don't have proof in Europe. When we do, I think grants will come easy because it's critical. In Germany last year, there were, uh, they slapped two years back, they slapped 4 billion euro fine on Germany. The European community slapped a 4 billion euro fine 
on Germany because of over nitrate, nitrate usage in, in agriculture. I think every regulator would love to have this monitor to show zero leaching so they get off his back and every user as well. Thanks, Thanks Rafi. Very clear. As one quick follow up before Ricardo gets his shot. Uh, Rafi, how often are farmers fertilizing? How often do they need to see where their levels are at and how much needs to be applied? Farmers which irrigate uh, mostly use irrigation systems as fertigation systems. They have a mixture and they fertilize through the, water, the irrigation water. That's 20% of the world, but it's 54% of the fertilizer used in the world because that's the, the, the advanced uh, um, uh, crops, I would say, and the, and the controlled crops. So 20% of the world, 54% of the fertilizer used is used through uh, irrigation systems. They fertilize every time they irrigate, unless the system tells them you don't need to. Well, presently, there's no such system. They take a one week sample, they take a, data, a sample once a week, and then they set their mixing, their mixture ratio for the entire week, which could be five or seven or 35 uh, irrigation cycles with fertilizer inside based on one reading. When they use dots, they as you saw in the graph that I showed that we contained it into the green zone, for every irrigation slash fertilization cycle, there is a, there is a data-driven decision, yes or no. And that's how we managed to save so much. We saved 60% in a controlled trial of growing wheat. We saved 60% of the recommendation of the fertilizer and seed company when we grew it in a controlled system. 60% savings but that's control test. In the fields, uh, I estimate 40 to 50% savings. Well, a pretty big deal when you basically have zero margins like farmers do. Ricardo, do you have any questions for- Yes, Ralph? I do. Very, very fast. Because Ravi, you did a great pitch. You, Thank you. you clearly believe in what you're selling and and all, all the other guys have already done most of the questions. You, you mentioned this was a university project. So does yes. the university own any IP on this stuff? On the company, yeah. what's what's the ownership structure? And I'll just do the other the other question for the follow through, and you can answer both of them. I think you mainly answer all the product questions. I just want to know what are the major complications that you see going forward. What are the problems that you may foresee uh, for dots? Okay, I'll start with the IP or the the ownership structure. The university. Uh, holds about 10% of the company. I say about because they started with 13 and when we got the first investment, they went down by 20 and I didn't do the math in my head. They own today about 10% of the company, no voting rights, no, no board members. The IP is registered on the university uh, uh, external company today where the contract is that I have perpetual uh, uh, irrevocable license to use, ex exclusive perpetual irrevocable license to use and in the next round of funding, the ownership is transferred from the university to DOTS. The reason it's still with the university is because of the risk of losing it, because in case we don't raise funds, they don't want to lose the IP. Uh, but it's going to be, it, the IP is, is owned by DOTS on the next round of funding. That's for that. And I'm sorry, I lost the other question as... as Oh, what, are the, what, what are the major problems you, you, you foresee in the future of the company? What, what, uh, what, what, what would happen that would... Look, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. Uh, this, is a, this is a discussion I have with Matt, if he allows me to say it. it in today's market, the ambience is shitty, if I may say so. Uh, and everybody is, is trying to, to, to hunker down. But I believe that when there's a mudslide, the diamonds that were buried in the mud suddenly shine because they're exposed to the sun. And I believe that because we're not a nice to have product like a 3D uh, cloth application, but we're a life support system to agriculture, I don't see a problem in raising funds because again, we, we, are, we are there to save, not to have people buy more on the net. We're there to save and bring farmers back to the business when they're shut down now because of fertilizer problems. The problems I do see are two. One is reluctancy and two is the timeline. Because if I convince a farmer how good I am, and even if he says come tomorrow, the first time he's gonna be happy is in four months because he has to run a full cycle, a full season, and depends on what he grows, it might be six months. 
he has to run a full cycle, a full season until he says, wow. Now, this first wow will bring a thousand clients in the next round. But the time lapse in agriculture is seasonal. And it's extremely a s- slow developing market in that sense. I think it's going to be a, a snowball effect because if I have 10 projects in six months, which I plan to do, and 100 projects by next summer, I'll have thousands. The, the escalation is, is non-linear. It's, it's, it's asymptotic because of the need, not because I'm such a good salesman, because of the need. When, when people hear of this, they'll stand in line to get it because it's going to save them up to 50% of 30% of the production cost. Now, can you imagine 15% from expense to profit in a thin margin uh, environment of agriculture? I thought the fertilizer was 15% of the operational costs. Did I get 30, that wrong? 30 to 46 in wheat, $200 out of $420 production costs, $202, that's the number today, uh, is fertilizer. In corn, it's 36% roughly. In, in, in the, the, the variety of crops, oh, the, heavy, the numbers the heavy crops have doubled. 30 to 46% of the, produ- of the variable production cost is, is, is a fertilizer. If I cut 15% of that, then, the, then I'm sorry, 50% of that, then, then this goes directly from an expense line to a profit line with no more land, no more manpower, no more seeds and no more water. Just expense deleted, profit gained. Full stop. <laughs>